Welcome on in football fans, it's your boy GS Luke here with our week 4 main slate DFS and prop preview going over everything you guys need to know out there for tomorrow's action whether it's over there in your large field GBP lineups gonna go through three game stacks that I'm trying to get over the field on out there in my exposure and then afterwards going through the props over there in underdog and prize picks and four pieces of prop value that I've already gotten some exposure to and you might want to consider adding to a few slips yourself so by the end you'll have a little taste of what to get to over there on both sides and how I'm approaching my exposure for tomorrow. So let's not waste any time at all. Go ahead and hop right on in. But first off, a look at the DFS side and my top three stacks of the week. We're going to have some variety out here with this week's stacks, one of which is going to be a little bit chalkier, more of a single entry cash option than the last two going to get progressively lower owned. So we're going to start with the chalkier option in Kyler Murray, who's about 14.2% owned out there in GPPs, which is up there with the Jane Daniels on the other side of that game. And the reason why that ownership is so high on those two players players is you have over a 50 point total between the commanders and the cardinals so obviously a very favorable game script if you're going out there and playing off the vegas lines and you're going to see that reflected with projections both are popping through the roof when it comes to that we'll talk about joe burrow here in a second he's also popping very well for this week but kyler murray is the player that i'd prefer out there in large field gbps the reason for that is he's going to have a very concentrated offense this week partially because trey mcbride is going to be out and if they're playing for behind behind and are forced into more of a passing heavy script, it could be a lot of Kyler Murray to a Marvin Harrison Jr. So I've got that I want at least one pass catcher with all my Kyler Murray lineups, but a lot of those are just going to be Kyler Harrison Jr. stacks. And in terms of a buyback, because it is a 50 point total, I'm going to be buying it back in most cases, but I could see myself using a lot of lineups that are Kyler Murray out there with Marvin Harrison, and then maybe using a Noah Brown, a Zach Ertz is one of my cheaper buybacks, or spending up a little bit and taking a Rob. Robinson Jr. at the running back position. Uh, what you're assuming there is you hopefully somebody over there in the commanders can have a one or two touchdown day. And if it is going to be a very concentrated offense through Marvin Harrison and then Kyler, it could be that, you know, especially in a 50 point total, about 20, 30 points out there per player, um, which would be massive out there for large field GBP. So the ownership is going to be outrageous. We take a look at some of the ownership numbers at wide receiver. I've got Marvin Harrison at nearly 10% ownership. As Zach Ertz isn't all that chalky but still right about 5% ownership. And then your buybacks, like a Terry McLaurin, for example, where he's not super chalky at about 10%, but really all parts of this game, because everyone's projecting so well, are going to be a lot higher run than their peers. So that's why I have them down as more of a single entry or cash kind of option because of all of that inflated ownership. And uh, it's easier to get different in those kind of contests. You don't have to be as different. You don't have to be, you know, as low of a product ownership out there in a one or 2000 entry contest, which is why I prefer taking them in those sort of builds. If you're looking for more of a large field GBP play, but still somebody that I would be comfortable taking in some of the, you know, smaller field stuff. So some of my higher dollar single entries would be a Joe Burrow here at $6,600. He's a little bit lower owned. So that's why I think he's a little bit more viable in the large field contest, but it's still projecting through the roof. Like you have with these two quarterbacks, you can see there at about 3.2 X points per dollar. And what I love about Joe Burrow is that he's all about that passing. Unlike a Kyler Murray or Jaden Daniels, that brings a little bit of that rushing upside. If Joe Burrow is going to get to 20 plus fantasy points, it's not because he's rushing for 50 yards and a touchdown. It's because he's going for over 300 passing yards, likely going out there scoring at least two, maybe even three passing touchdowns, which is going to bring at least one wide receiver along with him pretty much every single time, if not multiple from the same team. So Joe Burrow chase stacks, I think are going to be pretty popular out there, but whether it's going a Burrow chase and then a Higgins, a Burrow Higgins Kasiki, right? Any one of these combinations of the players that we have over here, um, I think that there's a lot of upside regardless of the contest that you're entering. So I would say in the single entry, some of the smaller field stuff, I might not be doing a full game stack out here with this build. It might just be a Joe Burrow, then Higgins or a Chase, and then maybe a buyback out there in a few lineups. Large field GPPs is where maybe you want to play that blowout script. Uh, maybe not blowout script, more of a shootout script, I should say, out there in large field GPPs because the Panthers, they're going to be huge underdogs here. I don't think they're going to be that competitive. Um, that's why in single entries, that kind of thing, I don't know if I'm forcing in the buyback, but if you're playing in the large field GPPs, a way to force Burrow to have to throw for 300 plus yards is if the Panthers are going out there and posting some production themselves. So they've got Chuba Hubbard, a potential option at running back for a buyback. Deontay Johnson, his lines on sportsbooks are through the roof this week. It's Adam Thielen out. You've even got a Mingo, a Leggett, 
the rookie wide receiver that you consider for a buyback as well. But unlike that 50 point total game, I'm not forcing in a buyback in most of my lineups. You can see down there, I have it down as a sometimes in the buyback category, which means that maybe 40, maybe like 50% of my Joe Burrow builds, am I going to have somebody out there from the Panthers? So I would say the single entries, that sort of stuff, I'm probably not going to have a buyback in those kind of builds. It's more so the large field GPPs where you're really going for that correlation, where I would consider using somebody from the Carolina. And the last stack we're going to go with, we're going to keep this one quick, right? Concise and to the point out there. Of course, guys, for all my exposure, these aren't the only stacks that I'm playing by any means. They've got my projections at all, every other position as well, right? You got, you can see a lot of them on here, right? It's not blacked out. It should be, but hey give you guys the top of all these boards, I guess. Uh, for all my projections, everything that you guys see on here, make sure to check out the Patreon page. You can get my entire player pool, exactly what I'm doing out there with my stacks. And it's not just at the quarterback position, but uh, I'll give you guys the entire player pool for the entire slate. So make sure to check that out on the Patreon. There's a link in the description of the video to go out there and join it. And uh, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, right? You're probably thinking it's going to cost you like $100 a month to get all of this. It's only $15 a month for all of the showdown and all of the main slate stuff that I'm doing. Uh, the best value in the industry, bar none, really. It's not even comparable to the other sites out there. Um, you're getting the most bang for buck over there at the GS Luke patreon page so uh, check it out so the patreon page in the description of the video is exactly where you can find all of this but the last stack we're going to talk through here it's a little bit of a homer play i'm a Steeler fan as a lot of you guys probably know but uh in terms of points per dollar value he's well over that 3x mark just like some of these top tier quarterbacks and unlike these guys that are well over 10 percent ownership i've got justin fields here at only six percent so i would say that that is a value given the points per dollar value that he's bringing and i don't think you have to make him a stack you can see over here i've got Got him as not as necessary out there from the stacking cop poem um, because of the rushing upside that he can bring. And we're going to talk about the rushing upside with Fields when we get to the prop section. So don't, don't want to give away too much when we get over there to that underdog. But he has already told the media this week that he needs to use his legs more. I've been screaming at the guy as a Steeler fan to go out there and use those legs the last few weeks. He's had a ton of opportunities to go out there and really make, you know, 30, maybe even 40 yard rushes at that position. So I think he has a ton of upside there. I mean, you saw him score the rushing touchdown the last time out. And on top of that, he's been very productive with his downfield passing. So I think if you wanted to stack him, I would say like especially Pickens would be my favorite option if you're going for a stack. Uh, maybe a Friar Muth if you can get into the red zone, you know, score, maybe get you a five, six catches. But I don't think you have to have a stack with this. I think you could play Justin Fields naked if you wanted to. And he's got a lot of upside at a $5,500 price tag. So of course, right, we're going with our top three games stacks of the week. So I know I'd be remiss not to mention who some of those buyback options could be, but kind of like what we had here with the Joe Burrow stack, unless I'm playing in the large field GBPs, you know, if I'm just, you know, perfectly comfortable playing Justin Fields out there and single entry and cash if I wanted to. Um, if I was playing in the large field GBP though, you might want to consider a Jonathan Taylor, uh, Michael Pittman Jr., a Josh Downs out there as a buyback but I don't think you have to have it in any of those sort of lineups. It kind of depends on the contest that you're entering and, of course, your goal when you're going out there and playing in that contest as well. So um, I think that Justin Fields, though, at this kind of price tag, way too cheap for the upside that he brings, especially if you start to see that rushing upside that he hinted at out there in the media. And now for the prop side of things where I've got four props that I absolutely love out there for tomorrow. So we're going to start with prop six and over here with this Michael Pittman Jr. under on receptions. He's going up against my Steelers and what I know about number one wide receivers against the Steelers is that they oftentimes really struggle against Joey Porter Jr. It's a solid defense. I mean, historical defense to start this season. And on sports books, you've got Michael Pittman in the minus 130 range for his under. A few books even have him closer to minus 135 or minus 140. So there's a really good chance that this gets bumped at some point. So, you know, I actually ended up taking his under on receiving yards over there on the underdog side, which was posted a little bit higher over there in the week. But now that we've got this sportsbook value out there on the under on receptions, I think it's a solid prop to take over here on the prize pick side. So it's a tough matchup. You already know that the Steelers defense is going to try and really control the game. And when you've got a cornerback in JPJ, who again, as a Steeler fan, I know a lot more of because I see him every single week. He's extremely underrated. He's held a lot of elite tier wide receivers this year to 
to mediocre performances at the very best. And while he's not a true quote unquote shutdown corner, he doesn't always travel with the number one wide receiver. Like they could put Pittman in the slot, for example, right? And hide it from him. You're still talking about the sportsbook line value. You're still talking about maybe the toughest matchup um, in terms of the pass defense in the league. So why not take an under here on Pittman? So whether it's an under on yards, if you can get that like 47 and a half, 48 and a half or something like that, I would love an under on yards. But at receptions at four and a half, I think there's some solid value there too. And then it's also a fade over here on Cortland Sun, who, you know, no diss to my guy Cortland, but he's going against, you know, Sauce Gardner, right? The best cornerback in the NFL. Um, he could move around just like Pittman, so he could try and hide out there. But if they're going to put him in the slot, he doesn't have that deep play potential, right? You're not going to get, you know, a 50-yard bomb down the field out of the slot very often. Usually, you got to get those kind of targets outside. So that's why I like the under on the Cortland Sun yards here, right? If he's going to play outside where a lot of those big plays are going to come, it's going to be against the number one cornerback in the entire NFL. So that's why I like that under at 42 and a half. Um, on books, he's at that number. So there's actually not a lot of sportsbook value out there on this prop, but more so just a traditional analysis sort of play. I you know, know the matchup's going to be really tough. It's Bo Nix, rookie quarterback, who uh, has been pretty sketchy out there to start this year, which is why I've got that under over there on prize picks. And then over here on the underdog side, we've got two more props that I really like. So I'm going to start off with this Justin Fields over on rushing yards, which if you saw the fantasy section, you already know I like him out there for tomorrow, but also the fact that he already said he needs to rush the ball more out there for the Steelers. And if you've got a defense on the Colts that has lit up some big runs to opposing quarterbacks, I uh, haven't played a ton of rushing quarterbacks to start this year, but most notably last year, you saw that as a deficiency. So I like this over on Justin Fields rushing yards. I think that, you know, with Russell Wilson starting to become healthy, there's going to be a lot of urgency from Fields to go out there and really prove himself as that starting quarterback. And uh, I'll say it right now. I think he should be starting over Russell Wilson. He showed me enough personally to go out there and earn that job. But to go ahead, hammer that home, right? Convince Tomlin, uh, all the naysayers out there that maybe don't believe in him. He's got to go out there and really post one of those big days. So I don't think that's going to come through the air. It's just not that sort of player. Heck, the Steelers don't even have those deep downfield targets other than Pickens to really go out there and do so. So I think where you could start to see that electric factor, where you could really take over a game, would be if he puts up that rushing production. So that's why I like the over on it. I think you're going to see that this week. Week one, he had over 57 rushing yards, and that was on 14 attempts. Last two weeks, maybe not as crazy, has not rushed the ball nearly as effectively. But, you know, we know one thing about Justin Fields. He's maybe the fastest player on the field anytime he's playing. And uh, he's up there with Lamar when it comes to big play upside on the ground. And then we got this over on Marvin Harrison Jr. And frankly, he's like the only target that the Cardinals have. You've got Michael Wilson. He's more of that short wide receiver. I don't trust him to go out there and get us a ton of yardage. You've also got, what, Dorch out there. You've got James Conner out of the backfield. How the hell are they going to get their yardage? It's going to be through Marvin Harrison through the air. And fortunately for him, it's also maybe one of the softest matchups that he's going to have the entire year. You're talking about a commander secondary that has lit up a ton of fantasy production to opposing wide receivers. They've got Trey McBride out, so he's got a ton of opportunity in terms of targets likely coming his way. And though he hasn't had a ton of catches to start this year, his yards per catch is through the roof, which is kind of what we expected from um, one of the best athletes to ever come out of the NFL draft. So I think it's a perfect matchup here on, on DK. He is at 73 and a half yards. So there's a one yard discrepancy there. Um, Justin Fields too. He's also up there at 39 and a half yards. So yeah, three of the four picks here are sportsbook line values, but I don't think you have to marry yourself to only plus EV plays. Like for example, right, this Cortland Sun under was still a tra traditional analysis play, but what you found with the three plays that we talked about here is we found line value and a traditional analysis on top of that, right? Michael Pittman, tough matchup against JPJ. I already mentioned the fact that Justin Fields wants to rush more, right? It's a little bit of line value there too. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. with the perfect matchup, a perfect injury situation to go out there and succeed. Give me a little bit of line value on top of that. And that's where I really find my sweet spot. That's my process out there on props. And if you want to find plays that are not only checking the box from the plus EV perspective, but that also check just the logic standpoint, then make sure to check out my Patreon page. Just like my DFS stuff for $15 a month, you can get all the access to the prize picks and underdog exposure I'm getting to and the reasoning for getting there. And I'm not just a plus EV person, right? I know there's like bots out there, people that, you know, treat you know, betting on sports like it's a robot, which, you know, I'm a big numbers guy. I'm an electrical engineer by trade. I, I totally empathize with that kind of thought. 
But when you know ball, when you've been watching football for enough and you're an expert on it, you can combine that line value out there with that traditional analysis, and that's where you really push your ROI forward. So uh, that's my take on it. That's what I usually do out there for golf as well. I'm a big proponent in you know doing your own traditional analysis, but when you can find that line value is really when you can hammer home some value. Alrighty, guys, that's all I've got for the week four preview. Before you're hopping out of here, go ahead, smash that like button for me, and also comment down below who you've got as the top scorer on the slate for championship to earn a free month on my Patreon page. If you can guess the top score out there for Sunday, you will win a free month. Whether you want it over there on the proper DFS side, you'll just let me know over there on Twitter slash X, and I'll get you guys hooked up for that free membership. Of course, if you just want to join it now, you don't want to have to win a giveaway to get all that behind the scenes content, just check out the link in the description on there. We've got the choice between the DFS tier or the prop tier. Again, it's $15 a month for either of those options and a combined tier if you're looking to get both, uh, both of those aspects. So it's $25 a month it gives you a little discount if you're somebody that plays props and dfs make sure to check all that out make sure to smash that like button as i said before and uh best of luck with all of your exposure this weekend whether it's over there on the prop side with some underdog and prize pick stuff whether it's on DraftKings trying to take down the gpp hopefully you guys have a few things go go your way and uh you can make your boy proud out there with your roi so that's all i've got guys i appreciate your support here on the channel as per usual i'll see you guys for the monday night football preview out there on monday morning